Welcome to the dawn, the psalmist's timeline. We go through the dumbest timeline. Is this truly the dumbest timeline? Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Brian Holiday and another edition of The Dumbest Timeline. I'm recording this one after reading so many documents. I read... I feel almost crazy because I read most of, if not all, of a legal brief, which was very difficult because I don't understand all of it. I'm not going to lie. I asked some people that I know to also read it. And we, (laughs) and I had a whole conversation with them. I had to ask them questions and break it down. It was really interesting. Anyways, this episode is going to go long. I I really do have a lot of notes. And I'm telling you up front on this episode, it is very likely that this episode splits into two because I have a bunch of stuff to discuss about. Dr. Stephen Thaller. So, the reason I wanted to discuss this one. This episode is, in some ways, a continuation of the discussion I wanted to have regarding the lawsuits and the cases surrounding AI. I know there's a couple weeks ago where I put the link to a lot of the lawsuits that are happening surrounding AI in arts and just general lawsuits that are happening. And the reason I did that is because I had seen recently that there was a lot of conversations about, once again, recognizing AI as a tool so that it can be used in the creation of art and that the art would be covered under copyright. Or, which I found out from reading these documents, there is someone who is trying to register an AI as a creator completely and trying to establish precedence that the system they created is actually sentient. And for that reason, the art that it created and also the product it created should be covered under copyright and patent law. So I'll start us off. And the reason I think it's important for people to know about this person in particular is because I feel like this person is trying to pierce the bubble of our acceptance of AI in society. And there's an article in The Economist from April 2023 by Thomas Weber about this person and their whole story behind what they were trying to do. So this is one of the first, (laughs) I'm telling y'all, this is one of the first times where I had a significant amount of notes all together because I was, when I started digging deeper into this whole situation after all the different episodes I've done of the podcast, it was really important to me to find almost like a root of why AI art was going to be a bigger issue so that I could tell people who they should be looking out for and trying to stop. Because right now, Everyone's kind of just like, oh, you have like all these different AIs doing these different things. And and at this time, AI, in most cases, is still just seen as a tool. And I know a lot of people don't like that idea. But from a legal perspective, it's a tool that can be used to generate content. But it's still seen as a tool because you have to give it a prompt. It doesn't create on its own. And I know some people don't like to hear that it's just seen as a tool because they say it's dangerous. What it's doing and what it can do to the industry is dangerous. But ultimately, at this time, it is still seen relatively as a tool from a legal perspective. You still have to give it a prompt. It can 
create something only from the prompt. And for that reason, you can't then register the thing that it creates because you didn't create it. Okay, let me say it this way. You take a camera and you take a picture. The picture you took was you deciding in that moment to take the picture you wanted from that angle, uh, that shot, the lighting the way it is, and so on and so forth. You might even be one of those really detailed photographers who knows all the different settings and you go in and you adjust all the settings to get the best picture possible. Or you're someone who's using a smartphone because again, you taking the picture in that moment is you creating the thing. The camera can't take the picture without you. You either have to set the timer or you have to press the button. You have to set it up. You have to put the camera somewhere. If you just left the camera on a counter, the camera doesn't get up, look out the window, and decide it's going to take a picture of the street. And that's why it's important to understand that element of how AI is right now. AI is a tool that you have to go and press the button. It can't just do it on its own. Even if you press the button 10 years ago and told it, do whatever you want after you learn all these things and you've been programmed with all this stuff, once all that is done, start to create things on your own, you still had to press the button. It didn't just come to be on its own. And that's one of the main things I feel a lot of people are still pushing back on when it comes to AI. But AI, as we know it right now, most of them, the large language models are even worse off because those are just word calculators. But the stuff that they're doing now with these AI models, mid-journey, all these different art creations and whatnot are just tools that without a prompt are not creating. And don't forget, at some point there's a prompt. Even if you just leave it, even if you just told it, scour the internet, find every image ever created. Once you're done, start to create things based on every image. You still had to tell it to do that. And no, it's not the same as telling a child to draw. <laughs> you weirdos. The people who are like, well, it's the same thing as teaching a child. It's not the same thing as teaching a child. So, about Dr. Stephen Thaller. I feel like there was some buzz. There was some conversations about him. He was getting a lot of buzz because he said that he has a sentient device. And everyone had to pretend like they thought that was true. So I'll go over the timeline. Timeline of events. Specifically with the Dabis case. 2012, Dabis, an AI system created by Stephen Thaler, generates an original, quote-unquote, art titled A Recent Entrance to Paradise. 2018, Dabis conceives two novel products. Again, conceives on its own. Not true, but Thaler really does like to believe that this Dabis is sentient. But Dabis, quote-unquote, conceives two novel products, a food container with, with fractal geometry for rapid reheating and a flashing beacon for attracting attention in emergencies. Thaler, file, fi, Thaler files European patents applications for the food container listing Dabis as the inventor. Once again, if Dabis was sentient and a sentient being, it should be able to file its own patents. Just saying. I think I think we are making the case right here for why. If you can't file your own patent for your own work, you are not <laughs> you're not a person. That's what it is. Thaler has to go and file the patent for you. Why can't the AI do, why can't Dabis do it? Because it's not a person. He files a second European patent application for device and methods for attracting enhanced attention. Again, listing Dabas as the inventor. 
So he's listing this AI system as the inventor of these two things, the food container and his device and methods for attracting enhanced attention. 2019, Dollar files an Australian patent for the food container. Still working at it. Again, still poking at the bubble. 2020, they reject both patent applications. AI cannot be listed as an inventor. Justice Marcus Smith in the UK Patent Court upholds the UK's IPO's Decision to reject Dollar's patent application. Again, not Dobbis's. Dollar. Dollar submitted an application on behalf of the AI system, trying to state that the AI created the product on its own. Sure, once again, like I was saying before, maybe it creates it on its own. But don't forget, someone had to press the button first. You can set up the camera. You can leave it in the woods and set a timer or tell it, when a certain light passes by or feed it whatever reasoning you want. But at some point, it takes that picture because you set it up to take that picture. Dabas might have created this food container and it might have created that flashing beacon. But that's because it was fed information by him, Thaler, so that it could do so. Even if he didn't tell it to create a food container, he just had it search the internet and that's what it came up with. That is still him putting the spark there before the work is done. It continues like this for a couple of years where he just keeps trying to file the patent as Dabas and everyone just keeps telling him, homie, it's not going to work. Until in 2021... The CIPC issues a notice of issuance for the Dabas patent in South Africa. Lord have mercy, you complete morons. Now, I know it is rude to say that, to judge the decisions of a nation. And I would say I'm not judging the nation. I am judging the person that was potentially bribed, allegedly, allegedly, sprinkled that allegedly on top. Got to sprinkle that allegedly because we we have to. Because something doesn't make sense to me that you go to South Africa and you have a judge or a committee or whoever it is who looks at the situation, sees that Thaler is pitching to people that this AI system he built is aware and created these things on its own. He didn't do nothing. He's going to collect those checks, though, if that patent goes through. I'll tell you that much. That's another thing to consider. Where's the money going to go? It's going to go in his pocket. It gets more press if he can get the AI listed as the inventor, and then that money goes in his pocket. But hey, let's pretend. In June of 2021, the South African Companies and Intellectual Property Commission accepts Thaler's PCT application granting the first patent for an AI invention. Lord have mercy, save us from the insanity that these people are creating. Again, he keeps trying to submit it everywhere else, though. New Zealand, Australia, the European Union, the UK, the United States all turned him down. And he just keeps trying. He just keeps resubmitting. He keeps trying to push it up. The UK Supreme Court had to demiss his final appeal because dude just kept going. Can you imagine you bring it all the way to the Supreme Court that you want to say that this device is sentient and that it should be recognized as the inventor of a container and tell people, yes, it created it on its own. I'm not in charge of this thing. This man, <sighs> funny enough, People like him, I feel, are, and all respect to him, because he has his degrees, he's done his years, he started his own company, he's done the things he needs to do to be respected by the people in the industry and in the fields that he is in. But I have to say, when you are intentionally poking at the bubble and trying to find holes so that you can get into the system and start to spread BS about Dabas being the inventor and try and get people to recognize it as such. And everyone is telling you it doesn't work that way. It has to be created by a human being. Funny enough, I'm shocked he doesn't just want to say, I created it. Take the credit from the AI? 
if you had the AI set up and it creates this fantastic fractal geometric container that is so amazing that you want to bring it to market, just say you invented it, dude. Why are you trying to get it listed as the AI? The AI is not a person. It didn't invent it on its own. Everything that it did is based off of something you did before or a team of people did before. It cannot possibly have done it on its own, and you know that. Where did it learn fractal geometry? <laughs> you you gave it that information. You pro and again, AI is not a person, so it's not like it sat in a classroom and learned this. And I know some people are going to be upset and be like... Well, it's not fair. Why are we not allowed to say that this AI could learn this skill and then develop things? It can, but it learns it at a rate that makes it impossible for humanity to keep up. And that's not just a fear. That's a fact of the situation. Do you guys really want to live in a world where you just say, oh, well, this thing can make something in five seconds and it will take a human two hours. So... Yeah, we're just going to let the five-second thing go. I'm not afraid that AI will take over the world. I'm afraid that corporations will look at these things and start to say, well, it does it faster, so we don't need you. That's the... And it's the annoying part because it doesn't even make sense to do that. Oh, well, new jobs will come. People will have to figure out other things. Okay, but in the meantime, what? You want to leave people behind? You know you have a whole generation of people that didn't prepare for a world where fractal geometric containers are created by AI machines. No one planned for that. No one planned for the potential of mass producing things by machines that were thought up by machines that one person sits in a room and presses the shutter button, like I was saying before. Ultimately, I, I think what Thaler is doing is unfortunate. I think it's a very weird thing to decide this is what you want to do, but I can't, I mean, everyone has their own interests. Dr. Thaler's beliefs Dabas possesses a degree of sentience and creativity, even claiming the system experiences dreams and has a stream of consciousness. He cites Dabas' generation of an art titled A Recent Entrance to Paradise as early evidence of creativity. I'm going to put a picture of the art in the description a link to or maybe i'll make it the cover of the episode because guess what you can't register the art you can't copyright it because it was created by ai meaning i could use the art in any way i want which brings me to the point that ultimately dr thaler is using this creation to try and set precedence and i think that it is unfortunate to try and set precedence like this especially in a world where there are so many cases that are going to be coming up with this issue of AI and its creation. In this case, in this situation alone, it goes back years. And this is the thing that I find interesting about this is in the, in the economist article, he told them it's like a child and father bond. And when I hear that he doesn't have any kids, but he refers to, this as like his child, I start to realize, and I, I, it feels difficult to say, and I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a therapist, but this feels very much, the only way you could avoid being replaced was to anchor your legacy to your name. And it feels like that's what Thaler is doing here. He's trying to anchor his legacy and in his later years, 73, 74, in his later years, he is trying to establish that he created something that is sentient, that dreams, that has consciousness, that can create, and that can provide for itself. Because if he can register these patents and sell the product or sell the patent to someone, I don't know where that money goes once he's 
left us. But I find it so interesting that that feels like part of the plan is for it to be self-sustainable and to provide for itself. Where, I mean, you know what? If 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 he could register the patent as Dobbs and Dobbs was registered as the inventor, but represented marginalized people around the world so that everyone got a cut and this food container every purchase of this food container went back into making the world a better place for marginalized people people were being discriminated against you know i'd be the first person to sign up and say damn dobbis you real cool you one of the best people i know i will recognize dobbis as a human being if dobbis can turn around and make as much money as the Elon Musk and the Jeff Bezos and the Richard Branson's of the world. If Dabas can become an AI that can create food containers and special life-saving equipment and all these other things and can make billions of dollars and those billions of dollars go into saving people's lives every day, let's go. But I'm not seeing that. I'm just seeing someone poking at the bubble to say, it has dreams. It makes art. And that, to me, is one of the major issues. And I hope we can see something better in the future. Because I don't trust what this is. I don't trust the 74-year-old man who is trying to take everyone to court over and over to win a case so that they can force others to recognize their AI system as the inventor of something when everyone is telling you the law currently does not recognize that. He wants to set precedents. And on that note, I'm signing off for this episode. I'll be back with another one soon. The Dumbest Timeline, Series 2, AI, hosted by Brian Holiday. Produced by Brian Holiday for Brian Holiday Productions. Co-produced in partnership with Free X Agents Media. Theme song by Jasper Q. Jones. Mixing by Brian Holiday. Enjoyed the show? Follow this show on Spotify or review it on Apple Podcasts. Lastly, subscribe to The Dumbest Timeline on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening.